So Gipika, what are the top things that people do when they meet with friends, when they meet family, when there are family gatherings or mm. reunions? Uh, drinking, mm. dancing, going out, shopping, and complaining. Having food. Complaining. Ah, haven't. When did that get added to the list? Complaining is always top on the list when you meet people. Haven't you noticed that? I thought it was gossiping. That's that too. So that's <laughs> gossiping is also a way of complaining. Do you realize? Yeah, that's true. That's true. So that's what we'll talk about today. But first, intro, please. Hi there. You're listening to Spirituality Sideshow, where the weird meets the wonderful. Hit it. Hello, hello. We have changed position because we have a wonderful guest with us. But before I introduce him, we are talking about complaining, and I have two complaining experts with me. What? That doesn't sound right. Absolutely. Two zero complaining zero complaining experts with me, right? <laughs> you already know Sheila, and we have our friend and our first ever guest on the podcast, Amit. You're welcome. Amit and I have been doing this ongoing challenge called the Zero Complaint Challenge. And which is why we thought that it was apt to have him on the show today. Actually, this was not planned. He just happened to be here, and we dragged him into it. That's how we do it. Yes. Yes. And I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I can't complain. <laughs> okay, so the topic is complaining. Is it good, bad, ugly, or and why should we complain? Why should we not complain? And how the biggest question is how to stop complaining. So Sheila and Amit. Why don't you tell me why do people complain yeah, so much? Michael Singer, okay. in his book Untethered Soul, talks about how pressure builds up in people. Fear, distress, anxiety, it builds up a lot of pressure inside people. And then he says that people become like pressure cookers. And much like a pressure cooker, the reason why a pressure cooker whistles is because there is pressure inside of it. Right? And which is why people complain because there's so much of pressure built up inside of you that you have to let it out. Somehow, so psh, complaining lets it out. I think also retaining a lot of emotions, a, a, a strong point of views about certain things gets into this uh, uh, unconscious sometimes aspect of complaining. Even if you are not expressing it to people, we are con- constantly dwelling in the negative aspect of things not right. Things not working. But then that uh, makes complaining quite a good task practice in a way that it helps you vent out. Okay, I want to put this on the table here right now. Complaining is never ever good. But isn't it helping you let go of those emotions and that pressure? Why complaining is not good is because you're dwelling in it. So when you're dwelling in it all the time, it's it's disempowering you in any way. It's not helping you find solutions in life. And to put it very simply, what you focus on grows. Complaining keeps you in a negative loop. The more you complain, the more you descend into negativity. Mm -hmm. And when you focus on negativity, the only thing that grows in your life is negativity. So if you want to have negative things, negative circumstances, negative situations happen in your life, please continue (laughs) complaining. But then do you think that venting out is also bad? Like... Okay, can't we just go and talk to a friend and just vent out all we are going through? Maybe sometimes it might give us solutions also, right? If your venting out gives you solutions, please go ahead and vent. But when was the last time that you vented out and you had a solution? Hmm. Thought provoking. <laughs> See, we have a habit of complaining. You know how it was the past few days. It was raining and raining and raining and people kept complaining, started complaining. Oh my God, it's raining every day. Oh my God, Uh it's raining every day. Oh my God, it's raining every day. Today, there's no rain and it's really hot. And what did we do? We started saying, oh my God, it's so hot. Oh my God, it's so hot. That's the first thing I said to you when I reached here. Now, if you're going to state a fact, like it's very hot today, that's not complaining. But if you're going to add some... Very... You start, uh, adverbs yeah, you start <laughs> adding adverbs and you start talking like, oh my god, you're being burned to ashes to ashes because yeah. of these uh, because of the sun. That's complaining. And you were mentioning the five reasons why people complain. What are those? Oh, yes. There is a beautiful acronym for complaining, which is called GRIPE. 
G R I P E, which is also another word for complaining. The G stands for getting attention. Why do we complain? Mm-hmm. We complain because we want attention. Mother in law creates so much yeah. issues, husband creates problems, bosses dumping work on us. We want that attention. I think R is about uh, risking the responsibility. You don't want to take the responsibility of fixing situations or circumstances or even finding solutions in your own life. So you say, oh, I'm not going to do this. It's because there's things which are not right. Situations which are not right. Circumstances, other people who are not right. Mm-hmm. So that is the, you know, I'm not going to risk the responsibility of fixing the yeah. things which I complain about. This reminds me of a very beautiful joke that I read. You know, I love jokes, right? <laughs> There's this construction worker who sits down for lunch with all of his colleagues and he opens his package and he says, oh my God, turkey sandwich for lunch. He eats it. The next day again, he opens his lunch box and he says, turkey sandwich again. He eats it. Third day again, turkey sandwich. What's this turkey sandwich? And then his uh, colleagues ask him, you know, who packs your lunch box? And he says, I do. Okay, moving forward, I, G, R, I. Now, G is for getting attention. R is to remove responsibility. I is to induce envy. Somehow pretend that you're bigger than who you are. For instance, oh my God, so many people call me every single day. I'm so tired. What a great coach I am. <laughs> Were you complaining or bragging? Yeah, that's, that's I'm just trying to, you know, brag in a very way. Underhand banner. <laughs> so that's why we complain also. P. I think P is to demonstrate power, right? Yeah. Like, How does that work? You, I mean, you place yourself in a higher pedestal saying that, you know, I am knowledgeable about certain situations. I'm, I'm, I'm powerful to know that why things are not right. So here is I standard right as things. So if the roads are not fixed, it is for me, it's my right as a citizen. So why? Uh, to a certain extent it's right but if it goes overboard you are actually demonstrating your power in in that situation so yes. somewhere internally people feel powerful because they're complaining i'm complaining so i'm very powerful oh that's why half of india complains about the government yes <laughs> very powerful people very powerful people <laughs> e stands for excuses Complaining is a way of creating excuses for why our life is not working and why we need not do anything. For instance, if I continue complaining about my mother-in-law or I continue complaining about my husband, it is actually gives me an excuse to why I am in this sad state, why I am such a victim, why I am powerless. This is actually the flip of the earlier statement that we made where one P is for power and the second is for excuses. Yeah. Huh. Why you don't want to do those things. So, okay, people have really varied reasons of why they complain and they're very confusing. I'm not saying I don't complain, I complain all the time. But yeah, I have my reasons. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, give us some tips on how to stop complaining and then go on to telling us about your zero uh, complaint challenge. The difference between complaining and doing something about you is very simple. You have a problem with with your neighbor and you come and speak to Amit about it. What can Amit do about your neighbor? Nothing much. Just maybe give a suggestion here and there. Which you will not implement. <laughs> <laughs> but you have just vent, just vented out. Remember? You know what venting does? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. And I find that the room is not very good. And I come out. And I call up my sister and I tell her, you know what, what kind of a hotel I've been booked into. I book myself in, by the way. And I keep telling her, what is that? It's just meaningless venting. Yeah. When is it not complaining? You have an issue with your neighbor, you go and speak to your neighbor and speak to her directly. That's not complaining. I have a problem with my hotel and I go and speak to the hotel manager. That is not complaining. He has a problem with his colleagues. And he goes and he speaks to his colleagues directly. That is that is not complaining. That is actually taking responsibility for the problem and trying to find a solution. Also, you're addressing the right parties. Yes, the right. right. Mm-hmm. The, the point is, me doesn't make sense if I'm com- if I'm venting or complaining or constantly uh, you know looking for some kind of a listening ear just for the sake. 
but the solution can only be found when I'm addressing with the right people. Correct. So correct. if I have an issue with you, I'd rather come and say, you know, mm-hmm. Yatika, I think this is something that's hurting me or bothering right. me. And I, I'd like to have a conversation. But point is, a lot of us, it's find it easier to talk about other people to other people, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, you know, but but not to address. Address it because confrontation is such a big thing. It is because they will ask questions back, right? Yeah. So and they might not agree. With they might not agree. And you want you want to be right. Yeah. We say has a very beautiful yeah. statement. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? And both. It's not an answer. Yeah. You cannot say I want to be happy being right, like my sister says. No, you cannot. You cannot be happy. <laughs> or you can be right. And most of the time we are complaining because we want to be right about a certain thing. Right. We want to validate our own anger about it. Yeah. And I want to tell you one more thing. Do you know that complaining is contagious? Mm-hmm. Just like <laughs> passive smoking, okay? When you're in the company of smokers, that passive smoke harms you. Similarly, when you're in the company of complainers, they hurt you. They, you just pick up the vibe. You pick up the vibe, you also start complaining because, you know, what else will you do? And the birds of feather flock together. So you have Absolutely. bunches of cribbing friends and yes. bunch of, yes. bunches of agony circles. Let me see. <laughs> what kind of friends do I have? <laughs> but uh, you know, I think uh, we, uh, I think we are just demotiv- demotivating the friends who come together and talk about their problems with each other. I Talking don't... about problems is different from complaining constantly and not doing. If you're going to your friend and you're going to talk about the same thing over and over and over again, despite getting suggestions from your friends. Mm-hmm. That's complaining, no? True. Sure. Because you're doing it just because you want that attention properly. You just want to speak about it and feel like a victim and not take responsibility. And more importantly, if you want to do something to change, you have to take action. Yeah. Right. Change and is not the uh, objective of all the people, no? They just want to. You know, we had this uh, exercise when I was doing a certain program where they told us not to gossip for an entire week, week not to complain. You know, every time you're talking, be mindful and don't complain. I must say, I had nothing to speak for 10 days. <laughs> that's when I realized, you know, the, the conversations that we have, most of it is complaining. Complaining right. about maid, complaining about husband, in-laws, state of the roads, economy, food. food, weather. We go to restaurants and we complain about the food. We complain about the service. We, we, we keep scrolling through our phone and we complain about the speed of the network. Complaining, 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 complaining. So exhausting. So exhausting. I, I actually, that, that makes me realize that complaining is a basis for a mental upset. Yes, one of the ways of, one of the reasons for people going through depression is because they surround themselves with so much negativity yes. through complaining. And that negativity is that self complaining thought that probably they're not yes. getting her. Right coaching to address with. Correct, correct. Oh, by the way, if you're complaining in your mind and say, oh, I don't complain to others, but if you're complaining in your mind, that's a complaint too. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, people, tell me quickly three things that one must do to stop complaining. One, be mindful about what you're talking. And that is always my advice in any situation for mm-hmm. anything in life. Be mindful because words have vibration, words have frequency. Be mindful about what you're speaking. Mm. Number one. Right. Number two. I think take responsibility. You ah. once you realize that you are in a complaining zone, first thing when you become mind if you you are becoming mindful, you'll slowly slowly realize that you have you can't get into the same pattern. If the pattern continues, your life follows the same pattern. So take responsibility, do something to change it. And if you don't do something to change, then the third step is available. Third step? Be grateful. When you focus on what is going right in your life, the things that go right in your life increase. When you focus on whatever is not going on right, then the negativity steps in. So be grateful for what you have. Most of the anxiety that we have, most of the complaining is because we are not happy in the now. So gratitude, I think, is a beautiful thing. I actually want to admit this, that uh, whatever experiences that I had in my life so far, recently I had this realization that if I could just be grateful for where I stand today, 
I realize one fact that there, whatever, whatever situation that I'm, I, I am from a health perspective or financial perspective or relationship perspective, there are many who would kill for a life like mine. Yes. Yeah, that's so good. So instead of me getting into the loop of, you know, the hula loop of complaining, mm. I rather just sit and say, I'm so grateful for having that sense of awareness. Two, I am, I'm willing to now take a responsibility. Three, I can reach out to the right coach. And one of the coaches I really look up to is Shia. <laughs> and, I, and I also got to learn so much. You know, whether it was I Complete Me, the book, and the, or the recent one, this big book of cliches. It just helps you in different ways to kind of take control of your life. And when you know, you, you've done this, done that, I think it's important to you reach out to a professional co- coach and, and uh, you know, write to Sheila and, and have that address professionally, you know. It has to be taken methodically and it, it really helps me and she is genuinely grateful for the sense of direction that you give to people uh, and especially me in my journey. So, Thank you. Yeah. Actually, uh, you mm-hmm. remember Amit when we were working on our Zero Complaint Challenge. Now, Zero Complaint Challenge is a 21 day challenge to get rid of the habit of complaining in your life. Wow. Yeah, and when we worked on it, it's a step by step method where each day you are addressing, addressing one issue. Which means you slowly, you can't, if you've been complaining all your life, you can't suddenly stop complaining. Right, right. You can't. You have to do it one step at a time. And that's what's something that we had that sat down and we had designed. And complaining is like a program that keeps running. Yes. These 21 days of workshop, the the, uh, the tools and techniques that we had talked about actually help to deprogram those. Mm. So if you have to deprogram complaining mindset to gratitude mindset or to more of an awareness mindset so fine you're grateful about certain things that you have a lot of people you know are not are, are maybe in a better situation or worse situation but now that you have what are actions what are the actions that you can do so unless you deprogram your old ways of thinking you you will not be able to take action and even if those actions you take has to have meaningful results okay and uh... Where do I get to do this course? Yeah? Is this available somewhere? Sign you guys do it live? I'll put the link in the comment section below. Oh, it's somewhere available online? Oh, awesome! Super Amit, thank you so much for coming. It was such an interesting topic. Thank you. I know complaining is such a topic where, I mean, it's it's really hard to get over it because some people just want to vent out, speak out and just get over it or get their ego pumped. <laughs> But uh, I think once you stop complaining, there's just a lot more to do and get out of the victim mode, get out of the false powerful mode and try and grab your power now. (laughs) Super people, thank you so much for watching us. I hope you liked this show. Go check out the link for the 21 day no complaining challenge and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.